This evening I'm going to be talking about um, sales targets in the context of an agency agreement. So sales targets are usually out, set at the outset of an agency relationship and then again on a seasonal or a yearly basis. Sometimes the um, agent will propose the sales targets, especially well-established agents. Sometimes the sales targets will be imposed on the agent by the principal. Whichever way it's done, I think most people will agree that setting sales targets is more of an art than a science. And as with any target, set them too high or too low, and it could be a recipe for resentment and also potentially a source of further future disputes. Agents will usually look at sales targets as something to be aimed for, but they'll be all too aware of the real-life variables that can intervene to prevent those targets becoming a reality, from the loss of a major customer to a poor collection by the principal to something more um, serious and unexpected, for example, COVID. <coughs> Principals will usually see sales targets as more of an absolute. They'll see them maybe as a minimum. They'll factor them into their financial planning. And often, if the agent looks like they're at risk of missing by a significant margin uh, sales targets, or if they're repeatedly missing sales targets, then the principal's mind is likely to be start to turn to the prospect of exiting the agency agreement. So in this presentation, I'm going to be looking at the following. First of all, common provisions that you see in agency agreements relating to sales targets and the consequences of not meeting them. Secondly, I'm going to be looking at the question of whether principals can terminate the agency agreement if an agent fails to achieve the sales targets. And then third, I'm going to be looking at how agents might be able to strike back if they find themselves in the position where their, their agency contract is terminated as a result of failure to achieve sales targets. If you have a, rate, a written agency contract, it's likely to say something about sales targets. So common terms in agency contracts <coughs> include the following. A duty on the agent to achieve the sales targets for a particular season or year. A provision um, often stating that the principal and the agent will meet at the end of that period, the season or year, to discuss and try to agree targets for the next season or year. There'll often be a schedule to the agreement setting out current or setting out um, the sales targets for the, the first few seasons or the first year at the outset of the relationship. There might be um, a provision in the agency agreement, if it's been drafted by the principal or principal's lawyers, saying that any failure by the agent to achieve sales targets is automatically a material breach of the agency <coughs> contract. And the purpose of all these um, provisions in, in agency contracts, which will be drafted by principal's lawyers for the most part, is to try to give the principal a remedy if the agent doesn't achieve sales targets, usually to give the principal a right to terminate. That's the purpose. Whether that's the effect remains to be seen. So in written agency contracts, if there is a provision that says the agent must achieve sales targets in a particular season or year, then if the agent doesn't achieve sales targets in that season or year, it will be a breach of contract. But that's only the beginning of the analysis. Just because there's a breach of contract doesn't mean that the principal is entitled to terminate the agreement and also doesn't mean that if the principal does terminate the agreement, it's let off the hook from paying indemnity or compensation. So in the next two slides, we'll look at two different scenarios um, where an agent fails to achieve sales targets. In the first scenario, we'll look at the situation where the agency agreement doesn't say anything about the consequences of an agent failing to achieve sales targets. And in the second slide, we'll look at the scenario where the agency contract actually says if the agent fails to achieve sales targets, that will be a material breach of the agency agreement. So in the first scenario, we look at a situation where the agent has, has failed to achieve sales targets, but the agency contract doesn't address what the consequences of that are. In these situations, principals will often come to us and say, can I terminate the agency contract and avoid paying compensation or indemnity as a result of the agent's failure to hit the target that we agreed on or that was imposed on the agent. And the answer is to be found in, in this scenario is to be found in the regulations. Um, the commercial agents regulations say that the only circumstances in which a principal can terminate an agency contract without paying indemnity or compensation is where the agent has um, committed a repudiatory breach and I'll come on to that term in a minute, of the agency contract, and the principal terminates the agency contract because of that breach. So repudiatory breach is something that we've spoken about um, in, in previous seminars, and you might think we bang on about quite a bit. Um, 
essentially it means a breach which is so serious that it goes to the heart or the root of the contract. It undermines the whole um, intention of the arrangement between the parties. Um, it's, a, it's a high bar to actually meet, um, but effectively it's something which destroys the commercial agreement between the parties because it's so serious. Um, although there aren't any reported cases of the English court on this point, generally speaking, a one-off failure by an agent to achieve sales targets will, is unlikely to constitute a repudiatory breach of the agency contract, unless the failure is so spectacular that it has serious consequences for the principal, or there are other factors in play, and that will usually be other breaches of the agency contract by the agent. You know, for example, the agent's not doing what they're required to do, not complying with reasonable instructions, that sort of thing. So that's the scenario where you have an agency contract which doesn't, which provides the agent has to achieve sales targets, but doesn't say anything about the consequences. There you are, um, if you're the principal and you want to terminate, you need to show a repudiatory breach. So the second scenario, we'll look at the position where the agent has failed to achieve sales targets. But in this situation, the difference is that the agency contract provides that a failure by the agent to achieve sales targets will be a material breach of the agency contract. So in that situation, what the principal has done is try to elevate the breach of contract by the agent failing to meet sales targets into a breach which is a material breach, and there'll be, a, there'll be another clause in the agency contract which says that the principal can terminate the agency contract as if the agent commits a material breach. So effectively, the principal is trying to elevate that breach to a serious breach so it can terminate the agreement and try to argue that it doesn't owe compensation or an indemnity. So in this situation, if the agent doesn't achieve sales targets, the, the principal will be able to terminate the agency contract with immediate effect because there is a provision in the agency contract allowing them to do that. However, the key question for the principal and the agent, as is always key question for principal and agent on the termination of an agency agreement is, is the principal let off the hook from paying compensation or indemnity to the agent? Just because they've terminated doesn't mean the principal's still not exposed. Um, this point was addressed in the case, um, by the judge in the case of Crane and Sky, um, where the judge said that whatever the contract said, in that case the contract provided that um, particular breaches, which would normally be seen as not necessarily serious by the agent, were to be seen as automatic material breaches for the purposes of the contract. Um, the judge said that whatever the contract said, the principal could only rely on a breach of contract to avoid paying compensation or indemnity if the breach was, as a matter of law, a repudiatory breach, which brings us back to where we were in the last slide. So whatever the contract tried to do in elevating a more minor breach to, a, to a, what's called a material breach, um, the test that the court would apply in determining whether a principal owed compensation or indemnity was, was the breach repudiatory? Was it sufficiently serious as a matter of law? That said, the, the clause in that the uh, principal included in the contract saying that a, a failure to achieve tail targets is a material breach would be helpful to that, in that situation to a principal um, because the, the principal could say, well, we've thought about this in the drafting of the contract and we've said, we, you know, we concluded the intention of the parties was that a failure to reach sales targets was considered by us to be, be a serious breach. Um, but it doesn't get, it, it's not an automatic let off the hook for the principal in terms of paying indemnity or compensation. So where does this leave the agent then, um, whose agency contract's been terminated as a result of a failure to achieve sales targets? Well, it's going to depend if you're the agent. Um, it is possible for an agent's failure to achieve sales targets to be a repudiatory breach. <coughs> If the agent fails to achieve sales targets by a spectacular margin, um, and if there are easy comparisons, the easy comparators, for example, if the principal has six agents um, covering uh, various territories, geographical territories in the UK, one agent spectacularly misses sales targets, all the other six agents are either meeting or exceeding or nearly meeting sales targets, then it's easier in those circumstances for the principal to be able to argue that this one agent who's failing to achieve sales targets is in repudiatory breach. So if you're an agent, there's no general rule that failure to meet sales targets can never be a repudiatory breach. It can be. But um, on the other hand, agents will sometimes come to us and say, well, the principal snatched at, that wanted to exit the relationship and snatched at the fact that I didn't meet sales targets by you know, I got 80% or 60% or 50%, snatched at that, 
as a reason to terminate when there were no other factors in play. Um, so as an agent, if you feel, if you feel hard done by, if you feel that you weren't in very serious <coughs> breach of the contract, then you should be making a claim for compensation or indemnity if your agency contract's been terminated as a result of failure to meet sales targets, unless you know <coughs> that actually what you, what you did or your failure was a serious breach. Um, and you could also argue as agent that if there is a contractual clause in your written agreement which says that if you fail to meet sales targets, that's a automatically a material breach, you could say, ah, no, um, you have to show that it's repudiatory as a matter of law. It might sound like a, a strange distinction, but effectively what you're saying in those such circumstances is um, a principal can't make what isn't a serious breach into a serious breach by just denominating it in the contract as being a serious breach. So finally, um, there's also open to an agent the, um, a claim based on good faith. So the terminated agent should be looking to gather evidence to support its claim for compensation or indemnity if it's been terminated <coughs> as a result of a failure to achieve sales targets. So one weapon in the agent's arsenal is the fact that the regulations impose on the principal a duty on the principal to act in good faith in its relations with, agent, with the agent. Now this, this duty on the principal was totally radical when it was first introduced um, in the regulations. There, was, there is no obligation on the um, principal as a matter of English common law um, to uh, act in good faith towards the principal. So this was very new. Um, it's also quite an undeveloped area of law. Um, it's the, regu the regulation in which, um, which imposes the duty of good faith on principals is often overlooked by principals and agents alike. Um, but it certainly has legs, it certainly has potential, um, and you could see how an agent might, who has been terminated, the agent thinks unfairly, for failure to achieve sales targets, might say, well actually, the duty to act in good faith requires the principal to have acted fairly, with fairness, in the course of the agency agreement. So how could that duty potentially be deployed in a case where an agent has failed to meet sales targets? Well, if you think about it, in most agency relationships, the principal's provided by the agent with weekly, fortnightly, monthly reports saying who the agent has visited, who they've called, who they've shown the collection to. Um, there might be discussions between the agent and the principal of which new accounts the agent will be targeting as, as potential accounts for the next season or the next year. And the agent and principal might discuss the agent's marketing strategy. So if the principal is getting all this information as to what the agent is doing, who is seeing, who it's shown the, the collection to, um, and hasn't batted an eyelid, hasn't raised any concerns, hasn't said, I don't think you're seeing the right kind of customers, you're not really seeing enough, you're not showing enough of the collection, or we've had some problems. If the principal isn't raising those sorts of concerns as you go along, you can see how it might be difficult if it came to the, the, the end of the particular season or year to say to the agent, ah, you're in repudiatory breach because you haven't achieved sales targets. Because effectively, if the principal hasn't said anything and is aware of what the agent's doing, is aware of what the agent's activities, you could easily see how the agent might say, well, you tacitly approved my performance, my activities. You haven't said anything about it. You've not, you know what I've been doing, who I've been seeing. So you could see in those situations that an agent might say, well, the duty of good faith would oblige you to actually raise those concerns if you were concerned and as you haven't, then you've tacitly approved it. So it's it just some ideas from an agent, and it's not, it's not just confer, confined the duty of good faith to have, have I, you know, if I fail to meet sales targets, can I invoke that argument? It, it's across the board. Um, and just sort of for the sake of completeness, an agent obviously does owe a duty of good faith to the principal as well, so it does work, work both ways. Um, thank you for that. I'm now going to hand over to Lucy, who's going to talk about underperforming distributors.